students today's topic is separation technique that is fractionation see uh, today's topic is fractionation but uh, the before two videos um, are uh, um, centrifugation and uh, chromatography those two are also the separation techniques which i have uh, already done it the continuation of that particular topic is fractionation okay there are different types of separation techniques one among that is the fractionation okay so if you have to have the connectivity uh, the links of those two videos will be there in the description you can have a view on it so fractionation what do you mean by fractionation fractionation is generally refers to the process of isolating identifying and categorizing the various proteins present in the sample so this is one of the separation technique wherein we are going to separate it out or isolate the protein molecules which is there or any other molecules that matters we are going to focus on the separation of the molecules with different different um, methods okay so analysis of prote uh, proteomes is usually hindered by the vast amounts of proteins especially since the larger uh, larger or more abundant proteins to inhibit the uh, they they tend to inhibit the uh, signals of signals of the smaller or the uh, lower abundance proteins so to get rid of these uh, problems uh, we have to know or identify the properties of those molecules so that we can uh, you know uh, you, you can uh, fractionize uh, fract uh, fractionate them easily okay so uh, to uh, to find out the appropriate fractionization uh, technique we'll have to know their properties also so to know their properties um, or to separate out them from the rest of the unwanted protein the the wanted protein and the unwanted protein we'll have to separate it out isn't it so to know a particular technique which technique is apt for which particular protein that we are interested in so to know that we have to know their properties also the properties are like the various general properties uh, such as uh, size shape solubility of the proteins or the molecules stability sedimentation velocity ability to bind the uh, bind to the various ionic groups or the affinity for the substrates so these are the basic properties of the molecules which we if we if at all we are very much known about them we can adapt or we can have a, a choice of um, you know, method of fractionation so that depending on that we can segregate the proteins or fractionate the proteins proteins can also be fractionated by using chromatography and the electrophoris uh, electrophoretic procedures so here basically the fractionization meaning the separation techniques the separation can be done by various methods this is a process that we are following okay so the one of the process is the fractionation so the process can be done through various methods Oh, that is chromatography centrifugation electrophoretic procedures many other procedures are there but the one which we are studying is the fractionation today so this is the one of the typical example that usually fractionation means that comes in our mind is the crude oil separation correct so somewhere we uh, in our lower classes and all we have studied that it is got registered into our brains fractional distillation is somewhere where when we go to the blast furnace or um, separation of the crude oil that has got registered from our lower classes isn't it so that's why the typical example that i have shown you picture that is the crude oil separation by the fractional distillation here depending on the heat or uh, the temperature at particular degree celsius the the uh, particular fuel is getting separated or the oil is getting separated correct and see here if you can see it you can actually see uh, the uh, you know um, uh, the uh, the fuel oil is getting separated diesel is getting separated and uh, you know the white petrol which is used for the aeroplanes and all that has been separated see as then when the temperature is going on increasing you can see that there is a separation of the oils isn't it so this is one of the typical example that what we are going to speak and if you if you have to register a fractionation meaning in your uh, brains i think this is the typical example that it gets registered into your brain 
okay so the types when we come into uh, the types are many types but today we are going to take up the three types which are very typical and um, uh, which is mostly used uh, so fractional distillation is one of the technique that we are going to actually i showed you the picture the other way uh, so the fractional distillation is the first typical method that we are going to study what is that is the process of taking a chemical mixture by using the heat to separate out the various components in the mixture as i told you a little earlier in the blast furnace also you could see during, uh, at particular temperature or the uh, at particular degree celsius the particular uh, molecules get evaporated or change their phase okay thereby we can separate them out okay so this is what is that boiling points play a very important role in this particular separation separation technique okay so what are the uses of this fractional distillation so making uh, making of distilled water one which we can take out the crude oil gases fuels for the vehicles that is used as a fractional distillation to make the usable substances that's what we discussed and uh, drinking water from see from many or uh, natural resources you can't just take up the water and you it is not potable it's not so um, apt for drinking uh, so we'll have to remove some impurities and uh, whatever the minerals that is required to our body has to be essential minerals has to be segregated out from that right so uh, to make the natural water portable we use the uh, fractional distillation too for it okay so this is the uh, typical or laboratory uh, apparatus setup which shows you how exactly the fractional distillation is going to happen so here is the bunsen burner which you can see and this is also been studied in your lower classes 8th 9th 10th and all fractional distillation was the typical example which was given there and uh, you have also known about it very well so this is the round bottom flask which we can see here and the thermometer is that so that the temperature can be read red and you can see that there is a mixture of uh, solution is kept there so that the what uh, see uh, there is an uh, at the time uh, interval uh, during a certain temperature the molecules get evaporated and the uh, and you can see that there is a condenser kept here so that it can be collected here so the water in and water out water is getting separated out of the particular uh, molecules that we are required of okay so the molecules which we require or the proteins which we are trying to segregate from the um, mixture is getting collected in the conical flask here okay so this is a typical uh, laboratory setup for the um, fractional distillation so uh, next type is the fractional crystallization so what is this fractional crystallization this is dead opposite of that of the um, fractional distillation there the heat is going to play a very important role here the cold the temperature lower temperature there the temperature was in the plus isn't it higher degrees of temperatures here the lower degrees of temperature is going to play a very important role it is a method of separating a mixture of soluble uh, solutes by dissolving them in a proper suitable uh, hot uh, solvent and then lowering uh, the temperature slowly so you know the uh, the warmth of the temperature or certain temperature the certain molecules are going to be dissolved isn't it so that particular temperature when it is getting dissolved see uh, say like for example four molecules are there one has got dissolved already very soon as soon as you drop in into that into the mixture then uh, into the warm water then one by one uh, slowly slowly it get dissolved the last one which is going to dissolve very slowly you can see it's still the crystals in the bottom uh, in the flask uh you know suddenly when you cool it or to that particular temperature uh, before it gets uh, dissolved you if you can cool that uh, particular um, substance what happens those mixtures which are there yet not dissolved in the uh, solution gets crystallized or get separated out from the particular because the state is going to change from the liquid to solid when it is changing you can easily separate them out from that particular mixture so the one which is going to dissolve in the last so the least soluble component will crystallize first and lowering the other components in the solution leaving the other components in the solution as you lower the sol um, you know the temperatures uh, then slowly slowly one by one you can remove each component from the 
uh, solution mixture in turn by turn you can remove them out okay that is what is the idea of the fractional crystallization so fractional crystallization is used in a chemical engineering uh, before going to the uses i'll show you the picture how exactly the things happen see here this is the maximum degree temperature wherein the complete all these mixtures are got soluble into that particular um, that particular uh, medium okay this is the medium wherein all the other see brown white and other mixtures have got soluble so uh, you know dissolved in the particular this mixture okay at 1200 degrees celsius okay as you go on cooling it so you can see the cooling temperature here you can see that there is a green uh, color substances are got crystallized okay at this particular degree celsius that the uh, you know the um, the mixture is getting crystallized and got settled at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the uh, flask okay so here uh, the next uh, turn you can see that there is a brown color pellets getting crystallized that is certain degrees uh, are reduced here maybe around 800 degrees celsius around so that there is a crystallization of the other component see the next is the the third uh, conical flask wherein you can see that there is a white crystal getting appeared at that particular degree celsius you can see that the uh, components can be crystallized the other components that is the white crystals that you can see here getting crystallized so at the around 600 degree celsius or uh, half of that particular thing we we are very much successful in uh, in completely separating out the mixtures then so the three mixtures which were soluble in this particular uh, medium got separated in the last uh, medium the last environment which you can see at 600 degrees celsius or cooler than that you can be uh, you can separate out all the three mixtures so this is the ideology of the uh, scrap fractional crystallization so this can be used in a chemical engineering it can also be used in the separating out the solid solid mixtures also it can also be used in the geochemical and the physical processes as operations within crust okay and um, and mantle of the rocky uh, planetary body that is earth uh, it is also uh, that is nothing but uh, you know geology uh, is going to be very much help in the geology studies uh, these uh, fractional distillation or fractional crystallization is going to have a vast uh, uh, role in uh, uh, separating out the mixtures there. so it is one of the main processes of the magmatic um, differentiation uh, and uh, see you can see the fractional crystallization is also important in the formation of the sedimentation um, evaporate uh, rocks okay so uh, so here uh, is the uh, uses of the fractional crystallization wherein which in all fields it is going to be utilized so the next technique is the isotopic fractionation so in this uh, the isotopes are going to play a very important role see here the isotopic fr fr fractionation is also called as in um, in many other names maybe it can be a kinetic fractionation or it can be also called as a mass independent fractionation so all these are the different kinds of names for the same isotopic fractionation okay maybe there must be a slight changes also in the uh, process but uh, ultimately the ideology or the fundamental procedure is the isotopic fractionation then okay so the enrichment of one of the isotope rea uh, relative to another is a chemical or a physical process uh, two isotopes of an element are different in weight but not in our gross chemical properties so here we are going to completely depend on the isotopes which are determined by the number of electrons present in the in them okay so the chemicals both having the similar properties cannot be separated so easily so depending on the electrons in them so that is going to play a very important role in this particular kind of a separation technique so however a chemical effects do result from the different in mass of the isotopes so of course 100% uh, each chemical have a different mass of isotopes that we all know it's a fundamental basic property of a chemical so isotopes are different mass of isotopes are different isotopes of an element may have 
slightly different equilibrium constants for a particular chemical reaction so that slightly different uh, uh, amounts of reactions or the products are made from the reactants containing a different isotopes this leads to the isotopic fractionation so a small little loophole of a chemical that we have um, we can take it up as an advantage and that can be uh, very much helpful for us for the segregation of the chemicals here uh, so this uh, so of which uh, can be uh, expressed by a fractional factor that is alpha is the uh, factor that we are going to utilize so also known as the fraction of, uh, separation factor or the enrichment factor so this factor is a ratio of a concentrations of the two isotopes uh, in one compound divided by the ratio of the other compound so this is how we calculate the uh, ratios and the isotopal isotopes of the uh, different chemicals so the uh, precipitation of calcium carbonate from water is an best example of an equilibrium fractional process so equilibrium fractional process is uh, is nothing but again a, a fractional distillation kind of a process this also can be an apt for the isotope uh, fractional distillation wherein the precipitation of the calcium carbonate from the water uh, is being uh, taken as in consideration and uh, it can be separated out the next advanced uh, type or uh, in the fluorine of uh, uh, fluorine industries is was connected with the development of the atomic bomb uh, during the world war 2 so during the world war 2 they took uh, this up, um, this topic uh, you know this um, technique and utilized in the preparation of the atomic bombs so that the uh, chemicals can be separated very easily due, with the help of the isotopic fractional distillation okay oh, sorry fractionization and then uh, non non stick frying uh, pans that we have that we utilize in the uh, kitchen okay is coated with a fluorocarbon uh, resin so the best known of which uh, is the polytetrafluorine ethylene so this is a substance uh, wherein when you are when you uh, know this uh, some you uh, know uh, this also is one of the application for the isotopic um, fractionation some have highly specialized applications uh, in aerospace industries also okay so many such examples are there wherein they utilize this particular isotopic fraction distillation so uh, if i have to show you in a nature how exactly the isotopic fractionation is going to happen see in the ocean if you see that is um, there is an lighter isotopes getting evaporated at 10 degree uh, at a minus uh, 10 degree celsius if you can see then uh, see the minus uh, see the evaporate uh, heavier isotopes are getting condensed easier easily and uh, you know uh, there is a that is in the form of a water droplets in the form of a rain it is coming this is also an evaporation transmission from the uh, plants that is happening so these two are uh, one um, one other same and uh, see there is an evaporation taking place and again the precipitation is happening that is uh, in the form of an ice also it can come down or in the water droplets also it can come down so there is a separation or the uh, again there is an isotope differentiation there then evaporation also it can take up uh, again to form a clouds also that is again through the same plants photosynthesis so the photosynthesis is also going to play a very important role in the frag um, uh, sorry isotopal fractionation is also going to play a very important role in the photosynthesis too so there also the chemicals are uh, segregated or uh, you know getting evaporated uh, with the lighter isotopes first and then the heavier isotopes at the later stages okay this is an ideology of how uh, because you can't see the ions or the electrons as such isn't it so uh, this typical example which you see through your eyes in the nature is uh, can be taken up as an isotope fractionation okay naturally occurring isotope fractionation so here ends up the topic of the fractional uh, fraction uh, fractionization with three types we have dealt with uh, um, so many other such uh, fractionation techniques are present uh, typical ones that we have dealt today 
and uh, you have many other techniques separation techniques that is chromatography and the uh, centrifugation which i have already done in a previous videos the links are there in the descriptions you can have a refer on it so here ends up the topic i'll be back soon with the another separation technique okay that will be electrophoresis technique so thank you if you have liked the video and if you have understood the video like the video and subscribe